which I made a video <laughs> a few weeks back and it was uh, not my best video by far. It was, uh, I had only been using the Akitsu for like maybe three or four hours. Like really, I'd only downloaded it like two days before. And I was so impressed that I wanted to shoot you off a, a video to, to, you know, to tell you to, to, uh, put it on your radar. And since I made that video, it's gone on sale twice. So, if you haven't decided and you are still uh, considering a Kitsu, uh, wait for a sale. And, you know, it seems to go on sale pretty liberally. Uh, what I've changed, I know, I know I look the same, but what I'm doing is this is the same export. I'm talking about my avatar, not actually me in real life, of course. Um, this is the same export that I had before from Adobe Fuse. And, of course, it no longer connects to the auto rigger. So we can't hit the send to Mixamo button anymore. But exporting as OBJ is still good and the textures are fine and as long as you downloaded it uh you know you can still keep using fuse i am at least while i'm transitioning but uh you know the the gap is in your rigging and skin weights and that's the niche that akitsu covers and akitsu is also actually a render uh an animation uh, program and I talked a lot about it last time so I'm not gonna retread the same material I'm sure you're relieved so what I did was I wanted to put on a shirt <laughs> because it's getting cold out in the northern hemisphere and it's time for me to put on some more than just a tank top that I was wearing in the summer so uh, and also it was a chance to to kind of show off you know I did end up buying a kitsu and again I am recommending it but this time I'll show you a little bit uh, more how it fits into the workflow so I'm not gonna stay in any one program for very long but from uh, Adobe Fuse uh, I exported this same character, but wearing a shirt, my avatar, um, as OBJ. And I, I didn't really have a, a, a plan. It was more about, you know, let me learn, let me learn Akitsu's interface and let me just kind of figure out what, you know, let me just stumble my way through this. And I did watch some of the tutorials, but they go kind of fast. And it's the sort of thing that you just get better at with practice. So when they say that something is an art form, like weight painting is a bit of an art form. Yeah, what they, what they really mean is that it's okay to make mistakes because nobody's going to be, you know, looking down over your shoulder to correct you <laughs> because it's an art form just have confidence and kind of blunder your way through it so that's what I did uh, I'm at the risk of having another you know censorship nonsense on my channel I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I started with was straight up um, I imported the figure And I'm learning the interface a little bit, uh, a little by by drips and drabs. Um, and I used the the auto rigger, which is like the skull and <laughs> the skull and lightning. Which you know, I know you guys are Gen X. <laughs> 
and I, I am getting kind of used to this candy interface. It, uh, you know, I'm going to call it like a millennial interface, but I know you guys are Gen X because of that bone and skull and lightning. That's just an icon after my own heart, like <laughs> death and danger. That's the auto rigger. Anyway, so I started with the auto rigger. I went in and I did all this detail in the hands. And I don't really think this is uh, difficult. Although, you know, like the big question is, again, as an art form, like, what am I doing? What's right or wrong? Who's going to correct me on this? Like, where, where does this thumb joint go? <laughs> where are the bones in your hands? I don't know. Um, but it's not that hard to line things up. So let me hide some of this. Uh, I'm going to hide these big circular dots and I'm just using the numeric pad for the fast keys. Um, so you see what I've done here is in the base mesh. This is the fuse base mesh. If you're still using it, I, I love it. I'm going to keep using it. Um, you know, not on figures that I'm going to try to sell. But, uh, the thing is, you know, these, these knuckles are really pretty obvious in the mesh. So, uh, it was kind of obvious where these, um, you know, where, where these joints are supposed to go, like right under the knuckle. So that was pretty easy. But... Uh, yeah, one of the things that I wasn't sure, I was like, oh, okay, um, yeah, the auto rigger kind of pointed some bones in a certain direction, and I just kind of lined them up to make sure that, you know, each bone is pointing to the next bone. That was one of the recommendations. And uh, then when it came to, like, doing the head... And, you know, the neck. Um, I have to paint in the whole head. So it's all affected by this one bone. And, you know, I'm just kind of setting these up. Like, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I know there's a neck bone. I know there's a head bone. And I just painted in the smoothing. But what I didn't really <laughs> anticipate, because it wasn't, you know, I was like, I know I'm going to have to do this, like, 50 times until I'm good at it. So let's just play the piano until, you know, this all starts getting familiar. And again, like what I want to stress here about Akitsu is that, yeah, I'm doing this. So I haven't spent that much time, but I'm like finishing these projects and going all the way through. And I still don't know what I'm doing, but it's working. So that's the moral of the story is, is keep watching. I'll show you that it does work, even if you don't know what you're doing. So, uh, you know, like the bones all need to be oriented in a direction. I don't know which direction, you know, and then wait, wait, I have to slide over here. So like everything is in this um, spinner interface. And which one's X, which one's Y, which one's Z? I've nothing's labeled it's all just pretty colors <laughs> thanks Nuki Garo you know once I memorize the interface and know what I'm doing yeah that's fine but I have had some moments where it's like also up in here like this is you know this is kind of the detailed menu like which one is x which one is y which one is z y'all like I get that, you know, I mean, I can guess, but it's okay to label things sometimes, too, you know. All right, so the thing is, it's X, Y, Z. So you can think of it as going, uh, you know, R, G, B, X, Y, Z. That's how I'm remembering it. But you can also, like, you know, it's going, starts at the top and goes counterclockwise. Uh, no, ca uh, yeah, counterclockwise. Or you could just be, like, one and then left to right. Two, this has two slots, whatever. Whatever you need to do to remember. <laughs> All right, but in the process of this, I was like, uh, yeah, actually, I don't, I don't know what's normal. <laughs> 
been working with figures for like, you know, five years, but I don't pay attention to this stuff. I don't really care. Um, I did uh, rig in eyeball bones, eye bones, um, which the auto rigger doesn't do, but that was actually n not so hard. I'll show you that real quick. Um, I'm just going to hide the, the body mesh. So, you know, here's my sub meshes, the eyeballs, teeth and lashes. I'm not going to hide everything just so, you know, you can, you can get the idea. So anyway, I just like made the extra bone. Um, where's the, uh, yeah, here we go. So I just uh, added an extra bone using like the add bone button, wherever that is, rig. I have to be in the rig mode. And I just added the bone, bone plus, uh, to the head bone, and then kind of vaguely positioned it inside the eyeball. And then by shift clicking the uh, the eyeball, you know, I'm selecting actual vertices here. Uh, let me shrink down so I'm a little out of the way. And. Um, then, then, then you just hit uh, the multiply key on the keypad, which is like, you know, the asterisk, I guess. But on the keypad, it's like multiply. And that adds like that entire mesh. And then there was a way to center the selected bone, which obviously I've, I've selected the wrong bone, but like pretend I've selected this bone. There was a way to center it inside um, where was that? I think it's here. Why won't you stay? Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it was. Anyway, I'm, this is not an Akitsu tutorial, so I don't want to belabor it. But anyway, it was really easy. It was just like center it inside these vertices. And same thing with, uh... Um, breast bones, which I've never really done before. I was kind of debating, should I do, um, should I do breast bones or should I do like a mesh deformer, like a jiggle deformer? Where's my skin? And it just seemed kind of easy to do the breast bones. So that's what I tried and... Yeah, again, for like not knowing what I'm doing, it worked fine. I think I painted a little too high. My breasts are a little too jiggly. <laughs> and actually, like I went ahead and put on a shirt so that you wouldn't see, you know. I think YouTube is going through some like conservative push where stupid conspiracy theories are fine, but jiggling boobs are, you know a horror show so they do move sort of i'm using like dynamic bone from the asset store anyway you get the idea uh but the point is like i like i say i'm not like some genius i just i just tried it and it worked now what what you will see <laughs> look at my collar <laughs> okay wait wait let me turn on the let me turn my clothing back on um, Let's see. Uh, okay, so <laughs> if you look, if you look at um, my my collar, it's like obviously like oops, <laughs> it's like a little bit rigged to my head, and that's because I did this like I don't know eight or nine times in a row, and I was getting tired, and I started making mistakes, but uh. Yeah, so I'm just going to I'm just going to shrink down and I'm going to I'm going to correct I'm going to correct this this collar thing. <laughs> um let me see if I can do it. 
So the reason this happened was because I was painting the body. I was painting my body, like, nude. It's not my body, obviously. Like, I don't want to get weird about, you know, just because I'm using this puppet, this is not my body. But it, you get the idea. So as I was, I just painted the, the nude figure, you know, so I could get the joints doing exactly what I wanted to do. And then um, it was really easy to transfer these weight paints into the clothing. Like basically what you do is you just kind of duplicate uh, the body which I had painted and then select all of the meshes that have not yet been painted. And then there's a button here up in skin atelier that lets you yeah that's the button copy weights values of the selected vertice across to the ones that uh, basically it basically it's going to erase this skinned mesh it's going to pick up the ones that are unpainted which are basically render meshes not skin meshes it's going to turn them into skin meshes and it's going to copy this weight painting into them as best as it can. So long story short, in a kitsu, paint your body mesh once and then if you export the same figure from Adobe Fuse with other clothing, all you have to do, export the OBJ load it into a kitsu import and then you know select the meshes that you want to send over select you know create a duplicate of your painted mesh select the others the sub meshes hit one button and it's going to delete this which i'm just going to delete it right now and it will write all of the weight paints into the unskinned meshes. And boom, you have your figures updated. Uh, so that's what I did. But because I spent so much time like being really careful about weight painting the head and the neck and blah, blah, blah. Um, I forgot. And I didn't um, take out the paints in the shirt. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. Okay, I'm only looking at the shirt now. This is my neck bone. Here is my head bone. And see, here's my problem. It's just this yellow tip. On That's what's causing this. Right? You see it? Okay, so all I want to do is... What do I want to do? I'm going to select the head. Right click. Um, select influenced vertices and because I'm only showing the shirt none of the other hidden meshes are going to be affected. This is going to allow me to just paint these vertices. I don't have to worry about spilling over and I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. Uh, in fact, I think I'm just going to go like that and I'm going to numerically do it instead of painting it out. Not gonna work. Okay, now you're all connected to my neck. Nothing's connected to the head. All right, so again, just to show you, this is not hard. Um, and I could have, I could have sat here and just painted it very carefully, but instead, I just decided to select the head in this part of the mesh and set the head influence to zero. So you can work by painting, you can work numerically. Um, and the important thing is, again, like I said, this is not Blender. Nothing is cryptic. Some of the interface is a little, a little cutie poo. I'm getting used to it.
it doesn't matter to me. Like once I'm used to the interface, I don't care how cutesy poo it is. So, and also, also, I think the philosophy here is they're not they're not copying anyone else's software. So, you know, they're totally free to make up their own, or you know, their own every way of doing things. Which again, I am saying that I like it. So let me turn back on all of my hidden mesh meshes. Kind of just synchronize all of this by doing like la 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 la. Yeah. Okay. So everything's on now, and I'm gonna export. So they're all under this tree. They're all under this like character. Um. Yeah. Whatever. I'm gonna go up here. Export. FBX. I'm going to do the scene. I haven't done animations. And you can't have more than one figure in here. But uh, for right now, exporting the whole scene has worked best for me. Also, Akitsu will give you IK controllers, which I've already deleted. Because I didn't want to export them. Um, yeah, what iteration is this? G? I guess uh, what comes after G? Let's go launch Unity. Mm. How do I hide you? Let me hide you. I'm going to hide you too. Are you launching? So, um, you all know that I'm doing my avatar in Unity, and I, I have to kind of break this step up into a few, a few steps. This isn't ideal. <laughs> and we're going to be streamlining it, because also, back in Akitsu, uh, there's a whole way to, now that I have this figure, and my own, my own rig, which is still in progress, and I'll show you the flaws in a second like other other than just the the shirt flaw i have some other flaws because i didn't know what direction um any of my joints were supposed to point to but uh along with just being able to like add on clothing parts and other parented objects what i can also do in akitsu is i can load in all of the blend shapes as obj which i have from wrap three that's another tutorial i'm not going to open it and show you this time but uh you know i made my iphone blend shapes in wrap three and when i when i edited another mesh another base mesh i can make new iphone blend shapes in wrap three so uh unity are you together here all right so here was my previous figure. Um, I have uh, where's my okay H is the version that we're looking for. H. First I have to go through some import settings. And I'm going to get some of this wrong. <laughs> so bear with me. There's no blend shapes. Uh, there's no camera or lights. I don't think it matters to sort by name. I want the mesh compression off. I want read and write enabled. I want no optimizing. And I'm going to hit Legacy Blend Shape Normals, even though there are no blend shapes. It just changes some of my uh, import settings here. I am... I'm not actually animating in this Unity. I'm going to... I'm going to use Skinin in my PC and then send it over to... Uh, 
my Mac for animating, so this step is not necessary, but, you know, just bear with me. So, when I drag H in... Oh, what did I do wrong? Where is H? Is H teeny tiny? Yes, H is teeny tiny, so... The mistake was here. I'm not going to resize. And now it's still teeny tiny. Don't convert. Okay, now they more or less <laughs> are the same scale. Um, so this is an older version, my original iPhone blend shapes version. And the step here is a step that I've shown you in another tutorial, how to uh, copy paste blend shapes from one figure to the other, as long as they have the same vertex order. So mine do, um, as you'll see, I have, yeah, bodies is let me just do these in orders. So the eyelashes, right click, skin in, clipboard, copy. And over here in my new figures, eyelashes, I have no blend shapes. Skin in, clipboard, paste, blend shapes. And now I do have the blend shapes. I'm going to do that three more times for the eyes. Paste blend shapes for the bodies, and this one has most of my blend shapes. Clipboard copy. Paste blend shapes. And the last one is the teeth. blend shape. So now my my new figure rigged in a kitsu has all the blend shapes that my old figure rigged under Mixamo now has. Um, now normally if I was I have to do this step on my PC because Unity changed compute shaders and yeah there's always something so right now I need to do skin in on my PC but for convenience reasons I'm not doing the entire step on my PC I'm I'm gonna finish it over on my Mac so what I'm gonna do is now that I have the blend shapes pumped in I'm going to export FBX Export FBX. And it's Autumn H exporting to my exports folder. I should have some theme music playing. Here we go. Okay, where's my new figure? Under exports. Autumn H. Okay, and it hasn't been imported yet, and I'm not going to because, um, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick break and jump over to 
my Mac and we're going to pick it up from there, okay? Okay, so just to be confusing now, I am showing you the inside of my avatar uh, app, the, my standalone build, but it's running in the Unity editor. And so this inside my, my game screen is what you're, you're seeing when you watch YouTube. Um, if we go behind the scenes, uh, you can see uh, the the rest of the uh, the rest of the scene. Okay, so just so you have an idea of what what's going on. Um, Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the avatar because I'm probably getting like pretty bad frame rates anyway because I can't record and uh, run this at the same time. So hopefully you are still hearing me though. So I am bringing over. Alright, so I am bringing over the one that we just created, which was what, H? Okay, and again, I need to do some import settings and this is where I'm going to get some things wrong again. This time I do want to import the blend shapes. Uh, I, th I think this is correct. But again, I was wrong before. <laughs> so. uh, sure, sort the hierarchy by name. I don't care. No compression. Redirect enabled. Yes, because we are going to use skin in again on my Mac, on in my scene, and I'll explain why when we get to that step. Well, the vertices, legacy blend shape normals, and my rig is humanoid. Now, with any luck, I've done this correctly. No, I did not do it correctly. Come on. Okay, here we go. So what you're gonna see and over the next few minutes is just me setting up this figure to match the one that you were watching earlier. So I'm going to be quiet and just do it as quickly as possible. Okay, what I've done in this step is, this is all of my uh, setups for my blend shapes. And I guess I should have mentioned before that um, I'm super lazy and this is really useless information. But when I made my blend shapes, I just got tired of typing in all of the, the actual blend shape names and I just numbered them because they needed to match across several meshes. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of setup here, so I am going to start talking again. Um, the things that you need to know is that I have um, 
and animation rigging. which is uh, matching the iPhone's inputs to the head of the figure. And it requires some setup. So this is an IK chain that's taking information from the iPhone and uh, tracking it with Playmaker. Um, to set uh, my avatar's head rotation through animation rigging. There are a couple other things here too. I have a left hand and a right hand. And this is a simple two-bone IK to maneuver the arms. Um, not really an important step, but... And I do have some key commands to uh, move the... to move the, the rig. There are a few things you have to set up on um, the figure that you are animating and basically what you need is a rig builder I'm just going to steal it from the other figure and rig transform rig builder now shows my my um, animation rigging controls and rig transforms updates my figure. So another thing I have to do is I have a controller that's just standing. An animation controller. Um, yeah, the only thing left are these two dynamic bones. So I guess I'll move them over too. Why not? Okay, so I've stripped all the settings off of my old figure. I'm not going to delete it just yet. I'm going to make sure that everything works. <laughs> Over here, um, I think I need to set up, yeah, the dynamic bones. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. What have I forgotten? Uh, yeah, okay. So there's another, <laughs> there's several steps I've forgotten. Okay, so there's a skin in step. Um, and uh, again, these are things that I don't know, you might need to do, you might not. I have to combine these sub meshes. that share the blend shapes. And the reason for that is because I, the script from FaceCap 
targets one mesh and so just to make things either easier I'm using skin in to create a new merged mesh and that's sub mesh combine selection and it's turned it's disabled uh, these uh, earlier sub meshes created a new mesh which somehow has escaped my figure hierarchy but that's easy enough to drag back in and on my face cap component I need to tell it to use this base mesh Oh, there's one more step, because there's always one more step. Uh, I have a corrective blend shape on my teeth. <laughs> there's another little thing that I do. I decided that my head was too skinny. <laughs> so. so I rescale the head. This is obviously not something you're going to do on your own, you know, this, will, this is just about my own. What did I do wrong? Something's not happening. It's this annoying bounds thing. Why does it exist? I have no idea. It's one of those game engine things. One of those crazy game engine things. And I think my head looks too big. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not gonna just. Uh, I'm tired of, tired of, tired of this already. Are you working? Oh, what's, what, what am I, what am I seeing? All right, first I'm going to adjust my, oh, I messed something up under my chin. Yeah, what did I do? I must have, uh, I must have done something very bad with the painting in Akitsu, so. <laughs> so, I'm not going to do it again. I'm basically going to give up. And, uh, what, can I see what I did? Some kind of, some kind of weird disaster. Yeah, it looks like I, I, uh, affected the body mesh when I didn't intend to, and it's, um, changed some of my skinning. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna lick my wounds. Oh, uh, uh, there, there was one more thing that I wanted to go ahead and show you. So, okay, pretend that I skinned this correctly, because I'm not gonna... But what I wanted to show you um, is that thanks to the animation rigging and Unity's mechanism, uh, that issue that I had where I didn't know um, where the um, what how to orient the joints, it didn't matter. Like between mechanism and um, animation rigging you see the animation rigging is kind of you know tilting the head and the animation rigging is also like uh, you know animating my my hands into the right location 
thanks to that, it really didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. It didn't matter um, that my joints were turning all crazy directions because Mechanem with the humanoid rigging and animation rigging it just fixed the figure for me. They fixed the joint rotations. Now, what I did realize, and I am, you know, kind of sad that I, I messed this up, but what are you going to do? Just jumping back in here so I don't have to uh, do any other resets. Um... Back in a Kitsu, and I'm not gonna save because I I killed my chin somehow. Back, can we see it? Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna open a new a Kitsu. And I'm going to, I'm going to close this one without saving. Discard. All right. So in this new, in this new Akitsu, what it, what it finally occurred to me is that I should go ahead and just, uh, open up, you know, the original Mixamo version of this figure. And, uh, and see how they did it. And what, what I learned was, uh, yeah, Mixima's skinning. Well, we kind of knew this. It wasn't all that. It's real big and chunky. Uh, you know, it was designed for, like, decimated figures. It's not that different than what I did. But, <laughs> but now, now, I can go in and, uh, you know, see where the bones are. <laughs> and I could, you know, copy, I could copy out what, uh, how Mixamo intended these figures to be, to be rigged. And like really the only surprise, the only surprise for me was the, uh, the foot bone. Like the toe bone or whatever this is, is a little lower than the actual foot. Who knew? Um, I can also go in here and... You know, make sure that all of my, all of my joints are oriented in the same, same direction as Mixmo did them. And as you can see, it's not the same at all. Like I had blue, which <laughs> I can't, what, what is, what is blue? Uh, RGB, XYZ. So I had Z sticking out the ends of the joints. Uh, Mixamo has Y sticking out the ends of the joints. Is it right or wrong? Like, other than my horrible stretching that I killed my weight painting. <laughs> the point is, is that um, Unity didn't care between Mechanim and animation rigging. Uh, the joint rotation is sort of a, a moot point. It only matters if you want a professional thing or if you want to control it by script or if you're doing, like, you know, motion capture, then, you know, it's going to matter. But uh, if you're just messing around, this isn't hard. Jump in. Dive in. Do it. Get it done. <laughs> don't, don't do it wrong. <laughs> I'll see you next time. I hope you're taking care. Bye, everybody.